Aside from her gramophone scam, Madame Slot had a trio of nasty tricks up the sleeve of her long flowery blouse. If a child dared to complain about the daylight robbery, Madame Slot would open the piano lid and shut the nasty little wretch inside. Clang! That way, Madame Sloth could carry on with her precious snooze undisturbed. Let me out! If a child attempted to grasp her up to their parents, in the next lesson, Madame Sloth would turn the piano stool upside down and make them perch on one of the legs for a full hour. Ouch! So see, first of all, there's the kid shut in the piano. Oh, that's pretty bad, isn't it? And then there's the kid to having to sit on the, on the legs of the stool. That's bad too. If a child was so bold as to wake Madden Sloth up from one of her snoozers, they would be held upside down by their ankles and forced to play the piano with their nose. Look, that's pretty horrible, isn't it? Look. Oh my gosh. The kid would be going, ouch, ouch, ouch. While they'd be going, the piano would be going, plunk, plunk, plunk. One time, Ned couldn't take any more of this nonsense. As Madame Sloth lay on the sofa, snoring and bottom banging, he shouted, This is the end. I am never coming to one of your stupid piano lessons ever again. Needless to say, the piano teacher woke up in a foul mood. Without a word, Sloth walked out of the piano room and into the kitchen. As Ned sat on the piano stool, bemused, she turned, returned, clutching not one, not two, not three, but six tins of baked beans. One by one, she ripped them open and guzzled them down in seconds like some kind of Strong man at a fair, her tummy began making the most disturbing sounds, like a boiler that was about to explode. I need to go, announced Ned. Just one moment, replied Sloth. Next, she shuffled over to the boy. From the way she shuffled, it was clear she was clenching her cheeks together. Not her top cheeks, her bottom cheeks. Then, as soon as her behind was close to Ned's nose, she unclenched. No! recried the boy. Sloth let off the most explosive bottom banger of all time. Kaboom! The force of the blast was enough to blow Ned straight out the window. Whoosh! Needless to say, Ned was in no doubt as to how much he and all the children of the island had suffered at the hands of this monstrous woman. He knew that he would be doing them all a favour by teaching the teacher a lesson. The question was, how? Chapter 19. Dance to the Music of Slime It may surprise you to know that for someone who taught the piano, Madame Sloth could not actually play the piano herself. Not a note. In fact, she hated the sound of a piano being played, as she did all musical instruments. The only sound she did like was the sound of silence. Silence meant Sloth could sleep in peace. As Ned and Slime flew over the island, Ned spotted the roof of Madame Sloth's grand old black and white house. It was easy to spot as she had a swing pool in the shape of a piano in her garden, no doubt paid for by her ill-gotten gains. There, exclaimed the boy. See, so he is flying with slime, all those birds, over the house. The pair swooped down to the ground beside the house. Looking through the window, surprise, surprise, they saw the piano teacher, if you could call her that, fast asleep on her chaise longe, Snoring away. <sighs> Looking across the piano room, Ned and Slime could see the child Sloth was meant to be teaching. The poor thing had been made to stand on one leg on the piano stool 
while balancing a book of sheet music on her head. Presumably, this was some kind of punishment, no doubt for daring to stand up to the world's laziest piano teacher. Oh, you see, there she is. That poor kid having to... See, she's standing like that on one leg. Hard to know how she's even managing it, isn't it? The pigeon set Ned down and translimed back into a blob. The girl balancing on the stool looked as if she were about to expire. Her face had gone as red as a tomato and she was pouring with sweat. She must have been balancing there like a flamingo for nearly an hour. With a nod of his head, Ned signalled to her that she should escape. Are you sure? The girl mimed. She sang, are you sure? She was clearly terrified of the lady sprawled on the chaise longue. Ned nodded his head again. Tentatively, the girl put her other leg down and breathed a gigantic sigh of relief. <sighs> Thank you, she mouthed before tiptoeing out of the room. Slime slid under the boy's feet and inflated into a ball so Ned was just the right height to slide in through Sloth's open window. The boy eased himself through, landing on a piano stool. The slime ball followed. At first, it was too fat to fit through. Shun, shun, shun. Then slime made itself thin and poured itself through. Squelch. Shh, shush, Ned. Let's not wake Sloth yet. How best to wake someone who loves silence? With the world's loudest noise, of course. Slime, began the boy breathlessly. His idea was so good, he couldn't get it out quick enough. Yes, replied Slime, now turning back into a blob in the piano room. I need you to become the hugest orchestra in the world. Goody, goody! And I want you to make the noisiest noise that ever... Ned wasn't sure of the word to use, so he guessed at one. The noisiest noise that ever noised. That was perfect payback for Sloth's explosive bottom banger. In an instant, the blob divided itself into a hundred smaller blobs. These small blobs, smaller than globules, are called globettes. One by one, the globettes began to take shape. These glob ets translimed into musical instruments faster than Ned could name them. A tuba, a French horn, a violin. No. A trumpet, a double bass, a harp, a set of cymbals, a xylophone. See? a bass drum, and last but not least, a giant gong. Madame Sloth was still oblivious, still snoozing on her chaise lounge. See, that's them. Now, orchestra, began Ned, gather around her and I will conduct. When all the pieces of the orchestra were in position, as close to the piano teacher as possible, Ned assumed the role of conductor. He picked up a banana from the fruit bowl on the coffee table to use as a baton. The boy had once seen a conductor on the television, so had some sense of what to do. I'm going to use the television controller to show you like that. Ned tapped the banana on the table to get all the attention of the slimy instruments. Still, Madame Sloth snored and trumped away. Foot, foot. Her bottom bangers were so foul they could strip the wallpaper from the walls. All the instruments in the slime orchestra, or slime orchestra, turned to the conductor. Ned nodded and twirled his banana through the air. Remember, this isn't a banana, but it's like that. The noisiest noise that ever noised exploded into the room. A shocked sloth shut, shot, shot, oh. A shot up off the chaise lounge with incredible speed. She smashed up through the ceiling of her 
piano room. Bang. See, look, there she is. Whoops. Boom. She got such a shock. Smashed through her plush bedroom above. Bang. Finally smashing through the roof of her house. Look. Got through the roof of the house. She just went through two floors. Bang! Ah! Screamed Sloth as she sailed through the air. Ned looked up from the piano stool through the hole in the roof. The boy smiled to himself before he remembered something he had learned. Something important. Sir Isaac Newton's law of universal gravitation. In short, what goes up must come down. Ah! Screamed Sloth again. Not that screaming did any good, but it seemed like the appropriate thing to do. The large lady was plummeting straight towards little Ned. If the boy didn't do something, and fast, he would be nothing more than human slime. Look, she's on her way back down again, isn't she? It's going to land on him. Help! screamed Ned. Now he was screaming too. The piano! Thinking fast, slime transplimed back into a blob and reached around the legs of Madame Sloth's grand piano with its blobby arms. It yanked the instrument under the hole in the roof, knocking Ned on his piano stool out of the way as it did so. Ah! screamed Sloth before crash landing into her own grand piano. Clang, clung, clung, smash, bang, wallop. My piano! She cried from inside the mess of wood and keys and wire. Now I can't give any more piano lessons. You never did, retorted the boy. Ned, she screamed, I will get you for this. With that, Sloth tried to lift herself up from her piano. In all the kerfuffle, the gold carriage clock toppled off the mantelpiece and clonked Sloth on the head. Boink! Ouch, she cried. Another job well done, remarked Ned. Always a pleasure, replied Slime as it translimed into a rocket. Hop on. The boy smiled and hauled himself up. Then the rocket blasted him through the hole in sloth ceiling high up into the sky above. Zoom! I got the zoomies, howled the boy in delight. Chapter 20. Gruesome Twosome. Glutton's Glaces was the name emblazed on the island's one and only ice cream van. The proprietors were a husband and wife team, Glenn and Glenda Glutton. They were meant to sell ice cream, but instead they ate it, all of it, every last bit. The technique they had for stealing from children was foolproof. Look, there's a picture of their ice cream van, Glutton's Glaces. The van would be parked up outside the playground or school or beach, anywhere on the island where children could be found. Then Mrs. Glutton would appear at the serving window. What delicious ice cream would you like, my dear? She would ask in her nice voice. She had a nice voice and a nasty voice. More of the nasty one in a moment. Ooh, Ned cooed, looking at the sign with all the delicious toppings. Take your time, my dear. A uh, Mr. Whippy with chocolate sauce and chocolate chips and a chocolate flake, please. Ned really liked chocolate. Wonderful choice, my dear. Now, money first. Can you change a one pound note, please? Asked the boy. It had been a Christmas present from his grandmother. Of course we can, my dearest of dears. As soon as Ned had passed the money over, she snatched it out of his hand and yelled, Mr. Glutton, drive! This was in her nasty voice. Glenn Glutton, who'd been sitting in the driver's seat all along, put his foot on the accelerator pedal and they sped off. As they did, the pair shouted, So long, sucker! Poor Ned was left at the side of the road in a cloud of burning rubber, smell from tyres. No ice cream, no pound note. How could the gluttons be allowed to get away with this? Gret agreed, of course. There'd been so many attempts to bring the pair to justice, but greed stepped in every time to prevent them from being arrested. 